It's Brian Preston, the money guy. Here we go. Twenties. <laughs> 88 times over. Now, this is, if you're brand new to the Money Guy Show, you might be new about this, but if you've just watched three of our shows, you've probably, you probably heard of heard us heard mention this. 88 times over. So, mention, tell them what that is, and then let's talk about the behavior. Yeah, so what stuff. we've done is we have mathematically calculated that if you're a 20 year old and you can employ your dollars to go work for you from now until the time you turn 65, you can turn $1 into $88. That's how par- powerful every soldier in your army of dollar bills can be. Well done. And it's true. These things, this is your chance to launch. I will tell you, if you feel young and broke, you should feel a lot of just empowerment in the fact that your time, your age actually gives you a huge superpower over your much yep. older peers that make more money than you. So don't blow this opportunity. So let's go ahead and talk about how do you invest your time? What should you focus on in your 20s? Yeah, I think it's so interesting. You just said, Brian, the most valuable thing that you have in your 20s is time. And so the very first thing we're going to talk about is, okay, well, how should you invest that time, your most valuable resource? So the first thing, and this is hard when you're young, because let's face it, you go through college, you, you have now spent probably 16 years of your life sitting and being told how you should mm-hmm. do things. You've been in classrooms. Yep. So you're ready to do something. You're ready to go beat. So guess what my first thing is, is I'm going to tell you, you need to go get 10,000 hours worth of experience. You're like, oh my goodness, I, but I promise you, you need to be patient. You just said I spent 16 years or 16 whatever learning, and now i got to go spend five more years learning again, whatever this profession, whatever this trade is. And the way we get that is we, uh, Malcolm Gladwell came up with this expert, and he said that... He talked about it. He did not come up with it. Malcolm would want us to correct that, but he did he, turn it, popularize the he concept. He popularized the concept that in order to have mastery in anything, whether it's basket weaving or basketball or golf or whatever, you need to do it for 10,000 hours before sure. you develop mastery level. So definitely go put the five years in at becoming an expert on something. Also, go get a mentor. Yep. Don't reinvent the wheel. If you find somebody who is doing what you want to do, and you don't have to go blaze your own trail. Go find somebody that can love on you, mentor you, and teach you that knowledge because usually successful people want to be generous with that type of stuff as well. I think one of the things that I remember from my 20s that was so interesting is I know a lot of my peers would look at folks in their 20s that were just slightly older. Yeah. You know, so-and-so graduated college. They went and bought the nice BMW. I'm going to go buy the nice BMW because they did that. Maybe pick a mentor who's done this for a little while, has a little bit of experience behind them so that you can model yourself after them well. I think that's a good point. And then investing yourself. Now, this is this is one of those things where I don't want you to get busy doing nothing because mm-hmm. I think it's easy in your 20s, especially if you've finished college and so forth, you might have more downtime than you've ever had in your life because yep. you don't have to study as much as you did. You don't have kids yet. So you kind of own your life. That's right. So you're probably that. I want you to take a deep breath, enjoy that moment. But then you probably need to ask yourself, while I have this this time, this extra capacity, should I be doing something mm-hmm. with this? Because this is maybe when the advanced degrees, the yep. credentials, because Bo, you did it. I want you to tell your story. You got all of your certifications, including the CFP, mm-hmm. all three parts of the CFA exams, mm-hmm. And it was a week before your marriage. That's right. I finished the very last exam one week before my wife and I got married. And it was wonderful because what I did have back then was time. I think I've told you this over and over again. If I had to do it all over again, there's no way I could do it at this stage of life. Just being so busy with all the different things and young kids, it is much easier if you can do it early. Because you don't have margin anymore. Once exactly you get right. the, 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 the wife, you get the kids, you get the you know all the obligations and things pulling on not only your budget but your time. You don't own your life anymore, so make sure you do that stuff while you have the extra margin, the extra capacity. And you said another reason why this is so great in your 20s is in your 20s, you don't have a ton of experience. You don't have a ton of time behind you. So one of the things you can do is can go credential up or degree up so that it does age you a little bit. I think you said that's one of the ways that you overcame having a baby face early on. Yeah, I was insecure and had a baby face, so I went and put a lot of credentials after my name to try to to kick it up a notch. Now, another thing... Oh, go ahead. I'll just say, here in your mid-40s, you still got a baby face. You, you, oh, you've kept it around. That. You've kept I, it around. I, I appreciate it. By the way, speaking of baby faces, I don't know if y'all have noticed, we got a trend here <laughs> on the pitchers. We are putting our team members of the Bound Wealth on the slide. So if you guys are listening in podcast world... Definitely go to YouTube, and you can see some mm-hmm. of our team members. The only one I'll pick on is Reby, who's behind the scenes. And we say, Reby, why are you not in the photos? I'm taking the photos. It's that not is like not a good excuse. A gazillion folks that could have taken so, the picture. 
let's get on. Let me keep on with things so I don't get in trouble from um, Daniel on our, our time management skills here. But I want you also to consider your 20s as a chance to take a chance on a job. I had a neighbor who um, he told me he was selling print door to door and he wasn't making a lot of money. Right. And he was, but he was playing basketball in the evenings. Um, using some of that, I don't know that I would say that is the best way to use that extra margin of time, but but it worked out because through that basket, those basketball games, he was able to network and he met somebody who said because this is he was in Illinois and they said I'm out, you know, I'm from California, mm-hmm. um, technology company. We can't find enough salespeople. We can't have enough technical people. And and my buddy was like. I, I need to go that. over there because I'm selling door to door, making basically minimum wage. You tell me if I go to California, I'll have all this opportunity. So he tells me that moving to Silicon Valley in his 20s was the best decision he ever made. Now he quickly went back later after he had, you know, got his experience, got his foot in the door, and now was completely marketable. He's used that in other opportunities. Yep. But I thought it was great advice. Is that this is when you're in the 20s, you're unencumbered. Why not take a chance in, in, if, you, if you can if you can handle it? Yeah, and then the last one. This is one I think that people get so caught up in, Brian. Mm-hmm. They say this all the time. They say, "Oh, well, I'm in my 20s. I want to go out there and create memories. I want to go see the world and backpack across Europe and do all that stuff. And that's wonderful, but that's not the full story. I blame it on the gram." On Instagram. Yeah, everybody feels like, I mean, my wife tells me we want to start traveling, but all the cool places you want to go travel to, there's so many people that are trying to just go get the Instagram photos. Uh-huh, so they're going, uh-huh. so they're now over, over, um, what do they call it? Over vacationing or they're, you know, it's a, there's a whole problem yeah. in a lot of these unique Historical places. Historical landmarks and stuff. So it is one of those things where I will tell you, you do not have to travel to some small distant landing and run up a ton of credit card debt to create memories and building memories does not have to be expensive i would tell you you know one of the things if you're using debt to create memories you're doing Doing it all all wrong wrong. so so make sure you do what i think is bigger things we talk about this all the time we pick on reby about it because she's married and we daydream because if you ask me some of our best memories of marriage what do you do on a Tuesday, Bo? Man, what do I do on a Tuesday now? No, I'm talking about back in your back 20s. In the if day? you do it all over again and you had a little more, if you had more margin in your life, what would you do oh. if you were newly married and it was Tuesday? I'd walk in the door and I'd say, baby, let's go see a movie. Let's go get takeout let's go out and let's to go eat. to a movie Let's theater. go to a movie because it's one of the few times in your life you, you can go do those things. So creating memories does not have to be super expensive. Mm-hmm. It just makes sure you use your time wisely. In your 20s, we think it's about the little things, not the big things. Exactly. Um, let's talk about where to invest your money. So this is a powerful concept, but yep. let's talk because this kind of explains the eighty-eight times over. Yeah, it's the whole whole idea that uh, if you just start early, you don't have to do a whole lot. It yep. only takes a little bit to be very, very impactful. And this is what we said: if you want to be a millionaire by the time you turn sixty-five, how much do you have to save at each age? Well, we know this, and this is the whole eighty-eight times over concept. At 20 years old, you only have to save 95 bucks a month to get to a million dollars by the time you get to 65. Anybody can do that. Anybody. Anybody can save $95 a month. If you wait until age 25, it goes up. It's about 160. 30, it goes to 340. 35, up to 540. 40, you are in the four digits. We just want to show you that if you can start early, yep. it's a lot easier to build wealth than if you wait much later in life. So, d- Understand, in your 20s, open canvas of opportunity. You're probably feeling broke. You're feeling like you just don't have a lot. You might even be a little jealous of some of your older peers. Guys, this is why your time and deferred gratification, compounding interest, is the greatest equalizer ever, ever created. So you got to pay attention to those things, and it's going to be a really powerful thing. So let's talk about order of operations, Bo. With savings, deductibles, 401ks, how do you know where to put your first dollar or your next dollar? Where should it go? Yeah, we've done a a bunch of great shows on order of operations. Reeves, do you think we can put that in the – we'll actually put that in the description – uh, we think that starting out, you need to have a couple thousand bucks as your emergency fund. Once you get there, then you want to go get your employer match because that is free money. You yep. do want, do not want to walk away from that. And then because 88 times over is such a powerful concept, we think for young folks, if you're able, Roth assets are so, so, so valuable because they actually grow tax-free forever. I think the theme there is free because we talk about employer match is free money from your employer. So get that free money. Roth assets are tax 
free, meaning they grow without Uncle Sam taking yep. any portion in the future. You don't get a deduction now, but it does grow completely tax-free. Think about that fact that if you're saving $95 a month, that like we showed you yep. on that previous slide, if you could have all that money grow completely tax-free, super powerful stuff. Yep. So now the next question, Bo, is, well, how should you do this? What's the... You know, what's the part? Is it How do you invest? Yep. Uh, we think that when you start out and you're young, a great place to think about investing is in target date retirement funds. It takes a lot of the guesswork out of it for you. All you have to think about are two things. How much am I putting in? What day do I want to retire? That's it. So you pick 2030, 2040, 2050, and then it will naturally adjust for you. Right now, while you're a long way away from retirement or a long way away from that date, it'll be more aggressive. But then as you move through time, it slowly gets more and more conservative and adjusts for you. You only have to focus on when do I want to be financially independent? How much do I want to be saving? I think it's, um, I, I think what I like is to give data points too, because mm -hmm. we, we tell people, if we know how we're going to invest, well, how much should we be saving? And everybody knows, we tell everybody 20 to 25% is your goal. Yep. But I understand 20-year-olds, you're just starting out. You don't go, you don't start running like you're in the Olympics right from the get-go. <laughs> you kind of have to crawl, then you walk, then you learn to run. And it's only then when you learn to run that you can figure out if you're world-class yep. enough to go to the Olympics. Well, kind of investing's the same way. And we understand that. So that's why we talked about order of operations, the basics. But I like that Fidelity gives some guidance while you're working on getting to that aspirational goal of 20 to 25 percent, they shared that like a 25 year old, you probably should start you, as long as you're saving 15 percent, you're probably going to be OK right. by the time you reach retirement. So I thought that was a really powerful thing. 30 year old needs to be saving 18, 35 year old, 23. You see how quickly just like mm -hmm. to become a millionaire, the numbers go up quite a yep. bit. It's the same way with savings percentages. Yeah, so the big thing is you just want to start young. You want to start as early as possible because the earlier you start, the easier and more powerful it will be for you. So let's talk about what to investments to avoid. Okay. So what are what are the big things, Bo? Yeah, number one, I think that we see a lot of, a lot amongst our millennial counterparts is holding too much cash. Yep. Uh, because they've kind of grown up in the recession era, they have this analysis paralysis where they don't know what to do, so they just build up cash, build up cash, build up cash, not recognizing that you could be doing 88 times over with those dollars. Yeah, every one of those dollars. I mean, you're not being a good field general if you That's think right. about those dollars are not ma maximizing their potential, so put the money to work. Yep. There's nothing. I want you to have cash reserves, but don't hoard too much cash. Um, also, this is, this is a big one. I think people YOLO. When you hear YOLO, Bo, for a 20-year-old, what, what, what comes to mind? Uh, I think that means you only live once. And that's the folks who say, you know what, I'm going to take advantage of what I have right now, so I'm going to go do all the things that I can do while I'm in my 20s and have all the experiences Reward and buy all the yourself. things. That's what they're I've thinking. I've earned it. That's yeah, exactly I've right. I've earned it. I, I, I need to do this for myself. The problem is if you can't afford it, you can't do it That's because exactly you're not right. really – it's like I said, if you're funding your memories – through a credit card, you're creating a nightmare. I promise you, these yep. are not fulfilling dreams. You are creating a future nightmare for yourself, and you're going to look back and go, there's where it went mm -hmm. wrong. So don't make that mistake. Another thing we think that you should avoid in your 20s is racking up. And I'm doing, if you're li listening out there, I'm doing the air quotes, good, good debt. debt. Yep. And when we say good debt, we're talking about things. It's easy to justify, oh, I'm buying a student loan, or oh, I'm going to buy my first house. I'm not wasting money on rent. There are debts that are okay, but be careful racking up good debt because at the end of the day, it's still debt. Yeah, so be careful. Debt is very dangerous. It's a tool that can get you in a lot of trouble really quick, yep. so pay attention to it. Here's something, you know, you're going to realize you might have, you get your first job, you start saving, but you don't want to go the boring way that the money guy showed That's and told right. you. You don't want to do index funds that have this incredible, you know, 100-year history of being <laughs> successful. You figure, you know, the way to do this is penny stocks, stock options, cannabis, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. I mean, all these things come to mind on because you are so daggum smart. You don't need an index fund. That's for, that's for old folks. That's right. We're going to Bitcoin this thing. Yep. And, you know, in that same vein, you know, one thing that I did, I actually got, I did this myself, right? I bought insurance in my 20s to act as an investment. I bought whole life insurance. I did that exact thing. I was one of those people who just fell into the trap of trying to be too smart and not recognizing how simple and how easy it could be. That's it. And you just said it. It can be simple. I promise you guys, in your, your 20s, 
Don't let somebody sell you on something that's false or try to make it seem like you have to do something complex or edgy. Your 40 and 50 year old selves go tell you, do the index fund. I'm telling you, they don't. Because And here's why. I don't want to spend a ton of time because I know we need to move to the next thing. But innovation is going to keep walking, mm-hmm. guys. I mean, all the things that make your life easier, your cell phone, you know, artificial intelligence, all the things, the innovation, the globalization of the world, the markets will keep making money. Get in on the good stuff that's going. The pizza pie is getting bigger. Make money off of that instead of trying to go recreate the world. I think you said it beautifully, Brian. Uh, It's simple until we make it hard. So just don't make it hard. And it's the best time in the world to be an investor. Everything's free practically now. So do it.